both Wesley and his father were aware of the religious societies that existed within the Church of England and even, and even earlier, the role of Roman Catholic orders in the conversion of England. Uh, so he saw uh, uh, the need for uh, people getting together on a more intimate relationship, small groups, a dozen or so. Um, he, he saw that in history, but then he, he particularly learned it from the Moravians and uh, Peter Bowler and so on. Then after uh, Aldersgate, when he went to the continent, he saw it in functioning among the Moravians and to some degree among uh, the pietists. And being of a very practical turn of mind, he thought, we can do this, <laughs> you know, we can do this in England. And uh, of course, he'd already experimented with it in the, ho in the Holy Club at Oxford and in, uh, in Georgia in some ways. Uh, so he, what, he, what he himself called, Wesley himself called, the third rise of Methodism after Aldersgate, when he figured out how to do it, you know, that is how to actually form vital small communities within the larger church. And the, uh, uh, there is a theory and a term for that. Ecclesiola is the little church within the ecclesia, the, the larger church. And uh, renewal movements have often used the small group ecclesiola of some form, the little church within the larger church. And I think Wesley was profound in the way he did that because he, he wanted to hold the two together. He, he saw the need of the, the small group for the renewal of the larger, but he also saw the value of the larger as um, the carrier of tradition and liturgy and so on, and that which needed to be renewed. And if the ecclesiola becomes a new sect, movement outside the church, it loses its entree uh, to be able to have a renewing impact on the larger church. Well, first of all, we need to acknowledge the similarities. And people have compared the Jesuits to uh, positively, <laughs> negatively, uh, you know, Methodism within the Church of England to the Jesuits within the Roman Catholic Church. The, uh, and there are some similarities, particularly the, the idea of a high commitment covenant uh, community. Of course, the differences are um, uh, the Jesuits were before the Reformation. Um, uh, Wesley is evangelical in a way that the Jesuits are not. And he's more radical in, the, in this sense that he forms communities uh, including uh, married people, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a celibate order. Uh, it's people that continue to live their normal lives within the larger society and within the larger church, but within this covenant community. And um, so I, I think, I think the, uh, the emphasis on um, evangelical experience, the work of the Spirit, uh, living out the, the Christian life with a calling of holiness uh, to love God and to love others, not separated from the world, but within the world, um, is, uh, you know, is, uh, those are the points of difference and, the, and I think the points of, uh, of genius of, of early Methodism and very much relevant today. Yeah, uh, Christian perfection, Wesley used that term, um, but he also used the term holiness and sanctification, entire sanctification. He used the terms because they were the, they were the terms of the day. And um, I, th I, I don't think there's any problem with recognizing that the term perfection is a problematic term and Christian perfection is a problematic term. But whenever Wesley was asked to define it, he said, I mean simply to love God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind is our neighbor and our neighbors ourselves to walk as he walked, to have all the mind that was in Christ. He often put those three things together. And I think that summarizes it. I mean, Christian perfection is really Christian perfecting. It is a growth in grace, more and more into the character of uh, God and the image of Christ by the power of the Spirit. So it's a very dynamic kind of a thing. And for Wesley, it's social. That is, it's not something we do by going off by ourselves. We have to be in community. When, when uh, Wesley said all holiness is social holiness, what he meant was it's a corporate shared experience. It's not an individualized. You know, as I said, we're not called to be holy solitaries. Uh, so uh, it, it really, for Wesley, is all about love, both inward and outward. You know, you know, Wesley always used this phrase, all inward and outward holiness. Very intentional in the use of that phrase. Inward, the heart change. Outward, the way it's manifested in society. And the, the love of God animating our hearts. Faith working by love. 
Um, you know, that, that's, what, that's what Wesley was about. So Christian perfection, the term has probably been more unhelpful than helpful, but the concept is very dynamic, very biblical. Uh, I should say that Wesley also used the term Christian, uh, Christian perfection because it is, it is a biblical term, but it's often misunderstood in kind of philosophical way, whereas in the Bible, it's all about maturity, the, the, you know, the term that's, that's translated perfection. Yeah, well, he said the Sermon on the Way, uh, the Sermon on the Mount is the royal way to the kingdom. And I think he saw in the Sermon on the Mount the embodiment of Christian perfection, the embodiment of a holy life. This is, this is what a holy life means. And uh, he felt that the Sermon on the Mount contained a lot of very practical teaching that he could unpack and teach. Uh, and, you know, when he first preached out of doors in, um, uh, in, uh, to the coal miners in Bristol in 1739, he said, you know, I, I preached outdoors. Uh, I preached on the text, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. Then he said that evening, I began to, to teach to the group that responded. I began to teach on the Sermon on the Mount. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a very nice combination. It's, it's the call of the gospel to everyone, particularly to the, to the poor. And then for those who respond, here is the way to the kingdom. Here is the, uh, and it's, it's, on, it's in the Sermon on the Mount. And of course, many other scriptures, but as you say, he really concentrated on it. And some of the finest things he said, are, you know, are on, there's no Christianity except social Christianity, and many other good things are in the, that series of sermons. Thank you.